Thank you, Daryl. Well, here we are at Manzanar. But why are we here? As Bruce mentioned, we're here to continue the legacy. And part of that legacy is to remember what Sue Kunitomi Embry, what the Manzanar Committee has always done, bringing our community together, bringing friends of the community together to remember what happened at Manzanar in hopes of something like this never happening again. Also, we're here to continue the legacy of something that happened in 1988, which was something, was the culmination of the Japanese American community coming together to fight for redress for what happened during World War II. And we came together, we brought friends of our community, we worked with Congress, and this all culminated in the signing of the Civil Liberties Act of 1988, on August 10th, 1988, 20 years ago. And that act provided a measure of justice for Japanese Americans. It provided a presidential apology and also provided monetary compensation, though token, with compensation of $20,000 to those former inmates who were still alive on August 10th, 1988. But here we are, 20 years after the Civil Liberties Act, and there's still a big piece of our community that is still waiting for their proper measure of justice and redress. And this is the story of the Japanese Latin Americans. Probably many of you out there don't know this story, but during World War II, our U.S. government worked with 13 Latin American countries. And the U.S. government was seeking people to use for a hostage exchange, to exchange for Americans caught behind enemy lines in Japan. And so they went to Latin America, and these 13 Latin American countries were eager, because of situations similar to what was going on in the United States, these governments were also eager to get rid of some of their Japanese Americans. And so 2,264 Japanese Latin Americans were rounded it up, torn from their families and communities in Latin America, and brought here to the United States. They stopped in the Panama Canal, and they were sprayed with DDT, as supposedly to be deloused and all such you know, inhumane treatment. They wound up in Crystal City, Texas. And so many of them were used for that hostage exchange and wound up in Japan. But at the end of the war, when the camps closed, Crystal City was open much longer than the other camps. And many stayed in Crystal City until 1948. And what happened to Japanese Latin Americans who were not part of this hostage exchange were left to figure out what to do. The, Jap the Latin American countries from which they were taken, they didn't want them back. The United States had taken away their papers. They were essentially stateless people. Kidnapped from these Latin American countries, brought here, incarcerated in Crystal City. Some were able to go find employment at Seabrook Farms in New Jersey. But many of them had to go to war-torn Japan. And many were like Japanese Americans here, who never had been in Japan, yet here they had to go to devastated Japan. So after that, in 1988 and after 1988, when we started finding out about people who've been denied redress, we found out about the story about Japanese Latin Americans. And so NCR, Nikkei for Civil Rights and Redress, then known as the National Coalition for Redress and Reparations, got together in 1996 with other, other organizations, and we formed the Campaign for Justice to fight for redress now for Japanese Latin Americans. And we filed a lawsuit called Mochizuki versus the United States, which sued the United States to obtain redress because what happened in 1988 was Japanese Latin Americans were denied redress because of this you know, ugly twist. To add insult to injury, there's a stipulation in the Civil Liberties Act that you had to have been a citizen of the United States 
or a permanent resident alien during the time of the war. And of course, Japanese Latin Americans who've been kidnapped from these Latin American countries, they didn't have official papers. And so they were deemed not permanent resident aliens and were denied redress. So Campaign for Justice fought, filed this lawsuit in 1998, two years after the filing of the lawsuit, were able to negotiate with the Department of Justice. And what happened was, with the money that was left over from the public education fund that was to be given to uh, redress for Japanese Americans, there was enough money left over where Japanese Latin Americans would be offered $5,000 per former inmate. And so it was a bittersweet victory in 1998. But we've been fighting for 10 more years since then to fight for equity and redress. Because $5,000 to Japanese Latin Americans compared to what Japanese Americans got is obviously a slap in the face. So what's happening now is that there is a bill in Congress, so there's hope still. 2008, but these people are waiting and talk about being advanced in age, time, you know, sweeping by. They're still waiting. So there's a bill in Congress and we, Campaign for Justice, has a table in between the canopies here. We hope you visit the table because at the table you get more information about this bill. But this bill is essentially calling for a commission, just like the Japanese American Commission on Wartime Relocation and Internment of Civilians. We're seeking a commission that this bill is headed up by Senator Inouye in the Senate and Congressman Javier Becerra of Los Angeles in the House of Representatives. And this bill would convene a commission to look into what happened to Japanese Latin Americans. And we're trying to do it as quickly as possible because people are waiting, people are dying. And so we're trying to get this passed this year so that these people can finally get their proper redress. So we're hoping that all of you will visit our table. Christine O, oh, our legislative campaign manager for Campaign for Justice is there. And we have letters that we hope that you will sign to send to your representatives. Because we're here at Manzanar and we must continue the legacy. Thank you. Thank you, Richard.